Hey friends, in this episode, I want to introduce you to a special type of calendar, the 445 calendar. It's used a lot in retail businesses and it has very specific characteristics. So if you want to find out what it's for, stay tuned. The 445 calendar is a little bit different from a regular calendar. So you'll often see that the 445 calendar is used in retail businesses. And what makes it so special is that the 445 calendar actually standardizes all of the periods. So what is the 445 calendar in general? Well, the characteristics of a 445 calendar are it has 52 weeks. Instead of the regular year that sometimes has 53 weeks, the 445 calendar only has 52 weeks. And those are always split into four quarters, each of 13 weeks. Now, each of these quarters has three periods. Now, what does that mean? Well, if we're looking at the 445 calendar, a quarter consists of two periods of four weeks. Those are the first two, the first two uh, periods in each quarter. And then the last period in a quarter always has five weeks. Now, there are variations of this calendar. You could have a 454 or a 544, but the concept is the same. It's just that the period number of weeks might just be slightly different. So how can we work with this if we want to have this in Power Query? Let's, let's say that you want to create a 445 calendar. I already created a query that does this, but let me show you what I did. So to start out, I created a query that has the date of today. We might use that later. I have a start date, which in this case is the 2nd of January, 2023. We have an ending date, end of 2025. And based on these parameters, we can use the simple trick to create a list of dates. And that is by using the list dates function. Now, what do I do here? With the list dates function, I have a start date. I calculate how many days are in between the starting and the ending date, which is uh, represented by this part. And then with each of the steps that I want to increment, I say that it can be just a single day. Now, based on this, we can click on two table. And what that does is it uses the table from list function to get us a column of dates. Now, so far that is nothing special. But why do we need this to start with? Well, the starting date of a 445 calendar can be different depending on your business. So it's useful to have a starting date that people can fill in just like here. Now, what is the foundation of this calendar table, the 445? Well, the easiest way to work with this is using indexes. Now, I first created a column with just the name of the week. That is just to give you some context. But the first really important column that we're going to work with is the day index. And a day index is simply an incremental number. It represents how many days there are in the calendar. That's why uh, basically we start at one. And for each additional day in the calendar, the number increments. And the easiest way to do that is simply use the table add index column function. You would normally do that by going to add column. Then go to index column from one. Simple as that. We will use this in our later calculations. Let's see how we can do that for your year index as well. So in the next step, I want to create an index that shows which how, how many years have already passed since the first year. Now, the easiest way to do that is we're going to make use of the day index column. And as I just told you, there's 364 days in each of the 445 calendar, calendar years. So to be able to find what the, the year index is, the easiest way to do that is to pick up the day index divided by 364, the number of days in a year, and then to round up that number. That's what I did here. So if we scroll all the way down, you're going to find that at 364 days, at 365 is going to show you number two instead. If we continue this, so we have an incremental number for the day and the year, we can do something similar for the quarter index as well. So this quarter index will represent how many quarters have already passed. And again, you can take the day index and knowing that each quarter has 13 weeks of seven days, we know that actually we can uh, have 91 days in a quarter. So if you divide the day index by 91 and you round the number up, you're going to find that these numbers represent the quarters. So the second quarter starts on day 92. And if you scroll down a little bit more, then we'll find that the third quarter starts on uh, day 183. 
we're, we're almost there. We're almost there. There's two more indexes that I want to show you. Next up, we have the week index, which works very similar. But with the week index, I'm again going to use the day index that we had at the start. Remove one and divide it by seven. And by and after doing that, we also want to add plus one to the end to get the right value as of the week index. As you can see, it's fairly simple once you can make use of the indexes, but it's very important to build this. Now here's the tricky part. The most tricky index value that you want to create is the one related to a period. Now, why is that one so tricky? The reason is that the periods are different. So in a four, four, five calendar, the first period of a quarter, a quarter will have three periods, but the first period in that quarter will have four weeks. The second period in the quarter will have four weeks, but the last period will have five weeks. Now let's see how we deal with this. Now to be able to have some flexibility and switch between 445, 454 and 544, I have added a variable to the top, which is a list with the order of what we need. So here I, for example, have 454, but let's make this 445 because we're looking at the 445 calendar. Now, how can I make use of these values to calculate a period index that respects the order of the number of weeks in a period? I'll show you what I did. So first of all, I retrieved the order from the order step here that I just showed you. So the result of this part is a list that says 445. Now the first step that we'll do is find the week within a cycle that we have. What does that mean? I want to find the week number uh, within a quarter. So, and how I can do that, I know that each of the quarters is 13 weeks. So if I grab the week index that we can calculate it in the previous step, I can remove one. I can then use the number mod function to divide it by 13 and return the remainder and add plus one to it. What this does is it will tell me which week of the quarter we are in. So if we're in week three, it's just going to show me three. But if we're in week 16, it's also going to show me three. Because week, week 16 is the third week in the second quarter. So basically we remove every full instance of 13 weeks that is within that number. Okay, so that gives me a week cycle. Now here's the part that makes it flexible for 445, 454, and 544. I'm going to check how many weeks the first period has. How do I know that? Well, I'm going to grab the first value from the order 445. So since this is a list that says 445, the list first will return me four weeks for the first period. Then I also want to do that up to the second period. So I'm doing a list sum function on the first two values in the list. And for 445, that means 4 plus 4 is 8. So up to the second period, we will have 8 weeks. And this is what we can use. Because in the next step, I'm creating another variable. And what I'm saying is, if the week that we're in, so the week in cycle, that means the week in the quarter, if that is smaller or equal than 4, then return me number 1. That will be the first period. If the week in cycle is smaller or equal to the weeks up to the second period, so up to eight, then return me two, and otherwise return me three, because that will be the third period. Now, why is this so wonderful? That is because if I make a change to the order of the 445, it will still pick up the weeks in cycle uh, in the right way. And depending on how many weeks we have in each of the periods, our calculation will change. Now, based on this, I'm going to also have to find how many, uh, how many 13 week cycles have passed because those are the quarters that have fully passed. And I can do that by taking the week index minus one, uh, divided by 13 and round down the number that will give me this. And to finally give us the result, all that I need to do is the cycle index which is the number of quarters that have passed. I multiply that by three. So let's say two quarters have passed. That is two times three. It's six periods. What's the period cycle that we're currently in? So if we're in the second week, I could have uh, two times three, is six plus another two periods, which is eight. 
Now, what is the result of this? I can show you here. So my period index is going to increment and it goes to number two after 28 days. That is because we will have four weeks times seven days. The second period here, if I continue, it will increment to three on the 57th day. So we have another 28 days. And the third one, if we scroll down all the way, it will be on the 92nd day. So we will have a five week third period. Okay, now that was the most important part because based on this, you can now see how many unique days, years, quarters, weeks, and periods we have. Now, all that's left to do for you is to find out which year we're in, which quarter we're in, which week we're in, and period. And actually, that's going to be very simple now. So if you want to create a year, my next step to create a year will be this. I'm going to grab the year of my starting date. Then I'm going to add the year index to it, minus one. Because we already know how many years have passed based on the year index. So if I just grab a year and then remove one from it, it's going to increment at the end of the year to 2024. So we're going to scroll down a little bit more. And right here, after 364 days, we're going to move from 2023 to 2024. Now, how can we do this with a quarter? Well, let me show you right away. We can grab the quarter index minus one. And then we uh, basically look how many, uh, we use the number mod function to divide it by four and see how many times we, uh, we could have done that. Because basically our quarter index keeps on incrementing until it cannot increment any longer because it reaches the end of the calendar. Similarly, we can do that for the week. Uh, so we can divide the week index by 52. And basically, after you reach 52, for example, week 53, we start counting again from one. And similarly, for the period index, we have 12 periods in a year. So after we increment from 12 periods to 13, it can start counting again from scratch. Now, what I showed you here, those are the fundamentals. Those are the most important columns that you need. But actually, there is a lot more that you could use. And I'm going to show you a quick look on what I have created for my calendar. There we go. And I'm going to close this. So I made an overview here of the columns that I find important. So there is a column name here, a description, and some example values that you can expect. But I like to create my 445 calendar with lots of descriptive columns. So I want to have, for example, a period range where you see the period number, but you also see the date ranges there because it's very hard to know what your period date range is like since it's not a standard calendar. And the same goes for the quarter, the quarter range. You might want to have that as well for the week range, uh, for the year range. So there's all kinds of columns that you can additionally create to improve your 445 calendar. And if that's something that you want to look into, uh, take a look at my blog because I'm going to post something on this soon. Other than that, I'm curious are there any other challenges you have with this type of calendar? Let me know in the comments below. And yeah, based on that, I'm going to see you next time. Thanks. Thanks for watching.